Hi, it's Chris the Guitar Amp Tech from Sydney, Australia here. Today we're going to be looking at this Vox AC15 and why it's not working. If that sounds of interest to you, please grab a coffee, pull up a chair, sit down and let's see if we can solve this one together. And if this sort of techie stuff interests you, hit the subscribe button, put a like on the video and we'll do a lot more together. We'll start by just bringing the power to the Vox through my current limiter. The external fuse on this one is the type that's in the IEC kettle cord socket. Fuse looks alright, but do we believe things that look okay? No we don't. We're going to check it with the meter. Right, well fuse checks out alright, so let's pop the chassis out and see what's going on inside. Oh, you're back. Good. Let's get stuck in. What do you reckon? It's pretty beautiful, isn't it? It's very nicely done the way this is done. All hand wired and with my favourite of the Celestian speakers, um, the Celestian Blue. I must admit my mod favourite modern production speakers are Weber's, but this Celestian Blue I really, really like. So when we have no power at all, we've got to start with the power supply. So I think we'll see there, there's a MOV, metal oxide varista. I'll see if I can get a better shot of that for you so you know what it looks like. It's this little fella here. It's a black disc. And the job of an MOV is to act as a surge protector. If anything comes in, this is before the primary side of the mains transformer. If some surge comes in here, the job of this is to basically break that circuit so that it doesn't damage anything further on. The input side of the MOV, 235, 235. So the MOV is good. Next up is going to be the rectifier tube which is an EZ81. Let's check this out. Whoa that's pretty healthy. 545 volts. Jeez. All right now let's have a look at the output of the rectifier and see how that's going. So we've got another clue here. This green twisted pair is the 6.3 volt filament winding which is the heaters that operate everything including the rectifier tube. And the rectifier tube is not illuminated, so consequently we're not getting anything on the secondary side, uh, anything on the um, DC side. So the 6.3 filament winding also goes to the power indicator. Power indicator is not on, so that's telling us that that 6.3 filament line is not working. And looking in here, you can't see it, but it looks like it's going down to another fuse just under there. Okay, let's pop him out and have a look. This is a very good example of why you never believe your eyes when it comes to checking a fuse. To me, I can see no break in that fuse wire. And if you don't check it with a meter, you put that back in and you scratch your head for the next hour. This fuse is blown, open circuit. I tested it on my multimeter. Let's replace that and see if we have any joy with our filament power. All right, what I've done now is I've put in a 6.3 amp fast blow fuse and I've still got the amp going through the current limiter just to protect it should anything still be wrong. I'm going to measure the filament voltage, which should be 6.3 volts AC. Um, I've just got that measured on uh, pins 4 and 5 of an EL84 and let's have a look and see how we go. What we'll now do is we'll turn the amp on. Hopefully this will come on and we're now going to just see if we got our 6.3 volts. Might be a bit less actually because I've got going through the current limiter. So come in a bit close. I just want to show you something. So the 6.3 windings off the secondary side of the power transformer need to have a reference to earth to avoid hum. So if there's no center tap, then what some manufacturers do, I think Fender use 200 ohm uh, resistors 
uh, Vox are using two 220 ohm resistors, one to one side of the 6.3, one to the other side, and common to earth. That gives it that reference to earth, so that eliminates the hum. So now I'm hoping that when we turn this back on, we will see, well, it won't be 6.3 because we're running through the um, current limiter, but let's see what we get. And hopefully we'll see this little light come on. Good sign, light is on. Oh, and I don't know if you can hear that, but we're hearing some hiss. Good sign. Right, now I've bypassed the current limiter, so we're now on full power. And we should be, yeah, it's still a little low. I wonder if something's loading down that circuit. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of DC voltages now from the power supply. This is our first um, filter cap after rectification. About 320 volts, looks good. 318 down the line here. 289, 278, and 296. Okay, all this is looking pretty good. Turn it up a bit and see what we're getting. Oh. Ouch. I reckon you can hear that. That's the sound of a very microphonic tube. That one's fit for the bin. Let's get some substitutions happening. The customer has given me a few, uh, two really nice vintage tubes. Um, this one's a Fender branded GC. 12AX7 and I've just tried a Westinghouse 12AT7 in that first stage. This was very microphonic before. This would be a very nice tube in here. And I've got the top boost. Uh oh. Uh. This is with nothing plugged in. That's just the that's just the tube oscillating within itself. Ah, oh, that's disappointing. Okay, let's try something. It looks like both this Philips fifty-seven fifty-one. And that lovely Westinghouse German made, both no good. It's all over the place. So I'm going to just, um, uh, now with the customer's permission, I'm just going to change those to EL84s to a new set. All right, I've put in a new set of tubes now. These are much st more stable. Wow, that's rock solid and we're now in a much healthier range. The other two were, were weak. And let's see, we've got 30.8 plate current on one. And twenty nine point eight on the other. That's excellent. That's just a couple of percent difference. Let's try out transconductance. Okay, on one we've got 8.63, 8 8.50, a really well matched set of tubes. So I'm very happy with that and they're much stronger. So what we've done is we've replaced the two power tubes with um, much more uh, stable, stronger tubes may have been the reason for, or part of the reason for the filament uh, fuse to go anyway. Had to replace the phase inverter tube. There was a nice old Philips one in there, 12AT7. 
So I replaced that with a uh, 12AX7, which is what it's supposed to be in a Vox. I did manage to get to use the um, Fender um, tube, it's 12AX7 um, GC tube. It's quite nice in there, a little bit microphonic, but acceptable. And in uh, that first stage for the top boost, I put in a Mullard, modern production Mullard 12AX7. So it's all sounding very good, nice and quiet now. Well, that was a fairly straightforward repair. Um, I think the blown filament fuse was mainly due to those EL84s failing. I could see no other fault in the unit. Um, I replaced those tubes, good solid readings now. So really happy with the sound of it. I've put the um, slow blow fuse back in by the way, so it'll just, you know, you give it a more reliable operation when there's any small surges. So I uh, did the usual service on the pots and the sockets. So the amp's now running as good as new. So I'll let you have a listen to it. That's the Vox AC15 done. Sounding great. We knew it would. My name's Chris. I'm the Guitar Amp Tech in Sydney, Australia. Thank you for sticking around and watching the video. If you want to see the next one, do a subscribe, give it a like, and I'll catch you at the next video.